Brent Bowles, how are you doing today? I am terrific. Thanks for thanks for having me. Uh, no problem. Anytime. So um, I was looking, I was snooping around on your TikTok account, and I noticed that you started on the 29th of December 2020, bang in the middle of the pandemic, and it's coming yes. up to your third anniversary now. So do you want to give us a brief account of how it all came about? Yeah, sure. So um, the reason I started this whole thing um, was because I had notoriously been terrible at social media uh, in, in the past. And I, I figured as a writer, I kind of had to be good at that because this is how we promote ourselves these days and gain some kind of an audience and a following. So I thought, you know what, why don't I try to build a base of people who, you know, if I release something or if I write a new musical, I'd have a base of people who are interested in, in you know, listening to that or whatever. So um, I had an idea to to break down songs because no, I didn't really see anybody doing much of that. And I thought, well, if I can educate people on why they love the songs they love from a songwriter's perspective, it gives me an unlimited amount of content. So I'd never run out of content. Um, and it would allow me to educate people at the same time, which is also what I'm all about. And um, I thought if I could educate a few hundred people, then that would be wonderful. And uh, I had very little idea that it would blow up to to what it ended up blowing up into. But um, it kind of it uh, took on a life of its own, shall we say. Yeah, I, I'll say so. Th yeah, 377.3 thousand followers uh, at today's count. Uh, that's mm -hmm. unbelievable. And, you know, you are a proper influencer now and you, you, you're into affiliate marketing. You have your own songwriting course. Um, and recently, uh, recently enough, you uh, somebody said, was it your professor in Berkeley said, do something unreasonable. And the next day you quit your job. Did. <laughs> so uh, I'm careful to advise you about anything today because you might you might just do it. But uh, so tell us about that. That must have been really scary. Yeah, yeah, it was. So like, I was, I was a public school choir teacher for five years in Connecticut here. And uh, excuse me. Um, I loved my job. I mean, I did. I loved the kids. Um, but and but at the same time, I, I figured there's got to be a way to to take advantage of the of the following that I had created on both Instagram and on TikTok. Um, and then I had this idea a little bit before that I had an idea to teach private songwriting lessons. I thought, Hey, that, that would be great. I could still, you know, change lives and teach and draw on my audience and teach private lessons. And then I thought, well, I'm thinking too small. Um, and I had this a germ of an idea to create a program where I could serve way more people and change more people's lives uh, and make more than I was making as a public school teacher. And it was when my professor said that, 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 do something unreasonable today thing that just it, it pushed me over the edge and i was like i gotta just do this because if i don't if i don't do this if i don't just jump in and do it i don't know that i ever will um and so i i thought by removing the safety net of the full-time job it would force me to make this happen so it was a very scary thing to do but uh in the end it was worth it and i would never ever 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 go back <laughs> right right yeah because i saw your story uh, on a video online and um I mean, I, I think it must be hard, though. I mean, the, the, the thing your spouse least wants to hear, I'm sure, is I'm becoming a TikToker uh, and I'm quitting my job in the normal course of things. But the figures were on your side. Was that fair to say at, at that point? Yes, I think so. And, I, you know, if I hadn't had the following that I had, I, I probably would not have done that. But I thought, you know, there's there's a way to do this. Um, and it was shortly after that that I found a program that helped music educators who wanted to sell their content online. Um, and so I invested in that program and that's what sort of, you know, paved, paved the way. Right, right. Okay. Uh, but, you know, you've got a lot of elements here. So you you obviously have the personality, you have the education and the knowledge, um, but there's also a risk-taking take taking factor in there, isn't there? I mean, like you have to have all these things working together. Am I missing anything here? What, what, what are the main elements, do you think? Um, you know, I think the, the, so the biggest, the biggest shift for me, um, and I think the thing that's been most helpful was that was the mindset change, because I think so many of us are, you know, I don't know how it is in other places, but like, I feel like here school prepares you to work for someone else and set your goals relatively low and just kind of go through life and do the thing. And I, I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, and the more I thought about it, the more I figured, you know, I 
there's some there's there's a there's something bigger here and i'm thinking too small and so the 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 shift in mindset like I want to be, yeah, I want this program that I'm creating to be the way that songwriters access their education, regardless of their financial means. And there doesn't really, nothing like that really exists right now. So, you know, I, as far, I found a, a, a need in the market that I'm hoping to fill and I want to help people. And why, why only think a couple hundred students? I, I want to think thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of students, um, ultimately. So I think that mindset shifts and allowing myself to dream big allowed me to, to kind of be more willing to take that risk. Um, because if you don't risk anything, you don't get anything. Absolutely nothing gained. Yeah. So, um, so can I ask, I mean, it's all come about because of your love of songwriting and specifically musical theater. Am I right in saying that? And, sure. and also, you know, Disney songs and that whole catalog. So was that always something that you just were just naturally gravitated towards and wanted to find out about how how did all that come about? Yeah, actually, so my I grew up listening to American country music. My my mom was very much like a, a just a country woman at heart, and so I was very um, I was very drawn to that music because I feel like country music more than more so than any other genre really tells a story. And I've always considered myself a storyteller. So that was my first foray into writing music was I would sit at the piano and I would write these little country songs. And then I got, um, I, I went to a musical theater camp as a performer and fell in love with musical theater music because talk about telling a story. I mean, that's the whole point of the American book musical is, is the story that the songs move the stories forward. Uh, and so that quickly became my bread and butter. That's all I wanted to do was perform in musical theater, write musical theater. Uh, and so that's what I did. I went to college. I, I majored in composition uh, with an emphasis in musical theater. I left left school and continued to write and, you know, had some stuff in festivals and, and whatnot off Broadway and here and there. Um, and uh, after attending the BMI workshop in New York, where I learned to really hone my lyric writing craft, uh, it it became uh, a mission for me to to educate people about it. So yeah, that's that's okay. Okay, yeah, it's interesting coming from country because country does have the best lyrics, I believe. Anyway, the first couple of lines of Sunday morning coming down. Uh, I woke up Monday morning. What is it? Sunday morning with no way to hold my head. It didn't hurt. Beer I had for breakfast wasn't bad so i had one more for dessert fantastic i mean but but you know and charlie parker was supposed to have loved country music for that reason for the stories and it's interesting the musical theater uh, it's you know it's so much about the music but it's about the lyrics too and and they there's a good marriage there isn't there sometimes the you know you you frequently point out in your videos how the music stops or will dip when the mood dips or you know might go high as the lyric says high um, so is, is, do you think that's why you were so drawn because you love both elements? I think so. And, you know, it was going to, going to the, to the BMI workshop, going through that really taught me a lot <clears throat> about prosody, about, you know, making sure that our music and our lyrics are telling the same story. Um, and, and some of, some of that is instinctive and some of that is learned. And I think the more, the more you learn to make intentional choices as a songwriter, uh, it it allows you to fill your toolbox with all these things that then become sort of second nature uh, as as you work through them and you you gain experience writing. Um, but I think it's really important to educate people about about how how to make sure that their music and their lyrics are telling the same story. And sometimes it is that. Sometimes it's text painting. Sometimes it's you know when we're talking about looking up to the sky. Yes, the music maybe goes up, but you know it's also um, if someone is is um, you know losing control of a situation in their in, in their song in the story of the song maybe the maybe uh you you start to introduce some chromaticism into the accompaniment or maybe the harmonic rhythm picks up or so there's so many different ways that you can use uh use music and lyrics to uh, in a happy marriage together to tell a story okay and and um so you are just taking off really as ai is also taking off i'm just wondering what what do you think of this whole thing is it is it going to ruin everything or is it going to be like MIDI in the 80s where it actually creates creative possibilities? I don't know. I mean, I it was not too long ago, maybe a few months ago, I sort of experimented and I had ChatGPT write a song like in the style of Adele like, lyrics and it was god awful. Um, so I, I am not so concerned yet that that's going to take the job of, of, of a songwriter. Um, but you never know. I don't know. And I haven't listened to any music that it's created yet. So <laughs> I don't know. I have, 
<clears throat> I have high hopes that the human being will still be at the heart of songs for the foreseeable future, but this stuff is yeah. improving at an exponential rate. So it remains to be seen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So can I ask when you sit down to play the piano and you're not make creating a lesson or making a video, what do you naturally go to play for pleasure? Uh, almost exclusively musical theater type stuff. Like I'll play through my favorite Sondheim songs. I'll hit some Jason Robert Brown. Uh, and, and a lot of times my, my brain just goes to writing anyway, just because that's just where my brain is. And I'm always working on a thousand projects at the same time. So right, right. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's rare that I'll actually sit and play and sing through other, other people's songs for pleasure. I, I just, I think my, my time is usually served better creating something new. Right. Okay. And uh, do you ever get writer's block or does it all flow naturally? Sure. Sure. And, and um, you know, I tell my the students that I have that are writing for musical theater, what I always tell them, this is, this really works for me um, is if I'm, if I'm at a point where I'm not quite sure what, what to do next, I, I close my eyes and I imagine that I'm an audience member sitting in the audience and I just sort of set the stage for myself. And I ask myself, okay, what, the music begins and what do I see in front of me? And a lot of times that will help inspire the next, the next thought. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, you must be getting quite uh, big because recently Lynn manuel Miranda commented and said that uh, stop giving away songwriting sec uh, secrets. Now he was obviously being ironic, but I mean, that must've been a major compliment for you. Uh, it was very validating. <laughs> yes. And, and since since then, we've had a couple short little conversations every now and then. He'll he'll direct message me on, on Instagram, and we'll have a little chat about something I posted. But it's it's still surreal, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I should say, in case people don't know, he he wrote Hamilton. He did he did all of it, didn't he himself? Yes, he wrote, wrote and starred in Hamilton, and did the music for Moana and and Canto and Vivo and uh, new songs for the Little Mermaid, uh, the live action with Alan Menken and a bunch of others. Right, 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 right. So he's very much in the mold of a Cole Porter um, oh, yeah. and, and Cole Porter always said it should only take one man to write one song. Do you believe they're That's the best it. ones? <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, depending on the person that, that, that is oftentimes true. I I've worked in every conceivable way. I've done book music and lyrics all myself. I've done music to other people's lyrics. I've done lyrics to other people's music. So I think there's, there is something nice about collaboration because it gives you an extra pair of eyes and ears on things. And I think a collaborator will sometimes push you to be the best you can be. Um, but then also when you're creating something all by yourself, you have ultimate control over everything. And that can be a good thing, too. Absolutely. Well, look, I'm a Beatles fan. I, I love the Beatles and I love Queen, too. And, and they're similar in that. I I think uh, what they did together, like, was never matched by what, like, like the solo stuff was never as good as the band stuff. And I think it's because they had this kind of... um relationship like a fighting couple you know who who just and and that made things better do you, do you think that's uh well you know do you think that's one of the major things of collaboration 100 yeah. percent. i mean sometimes you you can't you can't see all sides of something so to have somebody else go hey that chord progression is really not working for me um or hey we just we just said this maybe we should say this in a different way um and and sometimes to have not necessarily arguments, but, you know, dis spirited discussions about those kinds of things can really kind of peel the layers back and allow you to see things that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. I found that to be true when I've been collaborating. So I can only imagine that, you know, when you've got guys like that that are that are all sort of, they're operating on, on a, they're all operating on another level, um, it, bringing all those different perspectives into things can really just, you know, peel away all the layers of muck and and unearth the diamond underneath, you know. Right, right. Okay. Uh, and um, with your piano playing, do you do you spend a lot of time practicing piano or did you in the past or is it just something that you use to to do everything else that you do? It's, I don't I don't practice so much. I mean, I I, I think I, I was forced to take piano lessons in college, which I'm not upset about. That was it was a good thing. I hated it at the time, but it was a good thing because it forced me to to really get my my classical chops up. Um, which they were not, and still I've lost some, I've lost my edge since then. Um, but it's a tool, it's a tool. It just allows me to be able to create what I create. I'm by no means anything to write home about as far as a pianist is concerned, but I can I can get the job done. You know, I can sight read well enough to, you know, play through a musical theater score and I can, I can, uh, I know my way around the keys to, you know, I know enough music theory where I can 
it's just it's a it's a tool it's it's a tool that's what sure it is. sure okay yeah um listen i won't keep you too much longer just to ask what is your plan for the coming year 2024 where if i interview you again let's say in next december what do you hope to have achieved well i'm uh, i'm starting work on a new musical so that is something that i hope to have uh finished by the end of next year and uh, right now, my my main focus is is growing the songwriting program. So, I would hope that by the end of by the end of next year, my goal is to have a few hundred students in the program at least. Um, and I want to um, ultimately, I want when people think songwriting education, I want them to think me. So Great. that's my goal. That's it. That's a good goal. Well, look, if I know anybody, I I'll send them your way for sure. Uh, thanks. So thanks so much, Brett. My pleasure. Thank you.